What's up, world? It's your boy, Han Solo. We're broadcasting live here at Code Red Studio. Got my man, Chris Caesar. Caesar. You know what I'm saying? Crescent Kings on my side here. We got the album Perfect Picture. We got Mighty Music behind the camera. And we're here to give you uh, the interview and the perspective behind the scenes and the making of the album. What's up, family? Caesar, along with Han Solo. We're here talking about this uh, Reaching Higher project that I produced. Um, dropping October 1st. We'll get that worldwide available. Um, hope you like it, man. I love it. It's awesome. I'm pretty sure you like it. The beats are crazy. Flows are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Look at this artwork done by Mighty Joe. You know what I'm <laughs> And, uh, yeah. That's what it is. All right, so how we ended up linking together and making this music project Perfect Picture, we had done a lot of live shows and mutually saw one another. One of these shows is called The Sound Clash, performed on Frenchman Street in New Orleans, and it's an opportunity for MCs to go and showcase their live skills on stage, but there's also a part of the event that has producers and beat makers get up there and show off some of their productions. And I'd heard a lot of dope music coming from this kid, Chris, Crescent Kings, man, and uh, I knew that he had like kind of an explosive sound, like a new energy that I wanted to work with. So that was interesting and intriguing to me, and that kind of like jumped off the idea that we could get together and maybe produce a whole album, get 10 tracks. Uh, and then also, we went to the same studio, would see each other at in a recess, and so that was pretty cool, uh, getting into the lab together and seeing that he had worked mutually with a producer that I have, Prospect. So, you know, getting into the same circles here in New Orleans, seeing each other time after time, just created a general interest to create some dope hip hop. And I think we accomplished that with the album, man. True. All, everything he says is true, man. I uh, was working with a uh, prospect. He's kind of my mentor on a slip. You know, he was teaching me how to mix uh, music theory, stuff like that. Like, you know, teach me like crate digging, new samples to look up. Or whatever and i would be all over there all the time just checking them out like you know fly on the wall and be working with solo all the time you know what i'm saying working on albums cranking out albums projects not you know what i'm saying knocking them out and be like yo that dude prospect i mean uh solo be working so you know what i'm saying when i finally got the opportunity to work with him it was a sure go at this point in the story i have a lot of travel underneath my experience and um you know what i'm saying i went to europe last summer did a couple of networking events and videos and shows in London and Amsterdam. That definitely helped shape my character. Um, put out those productions with my little brother, actually, Scott Harney. Focus Cinema TV. That was big. Uh, this past summer, again, I went to California, San Diego, Venice Beach, met a bunch of people within the music industry, journalists and writers that can help tell my story. And I'm just letting them know that, you know, I've been around the block. Like, this is definitely not my first album. Um, but I do continue to grow and where the story's at right now is it's in a maturation process and a comfortable area, bro. Like I've been making this music for a while and I feel like I'm getting better, but I could not have gotten better if I continued to do that old school style of rap. So I had to kind of like challenge myself on a lot of Chris's youth, you know what I'm saying? Help me out. The homie Crescent Kings here definitely has a new style and a new sound that I tapped into and that kind of helped me regain some of my youth. So I feel like at this point in my career, I had to reinvent myself. It didn't make sense to keep doing that same album over and over again. So, you know, I'm happy that he was as experimentative as he was because it pushed me in this direction. Like he did a lot of the directing himself because in the past I had told the producer, like you were saying, look, I need this style of beat. I want these drums. I want this rhythm and melody. Well, I let all of that go. I just abandoned it. You know what I'm saying? And took his beats initially, and I had to go with the style that he had made. So that to me, again, was a challenge, but a rewarding challenge, man. So I think I've got a new youthful and energized sound in my music. Thanks to Crescent Kings, bro. Um, my favorite one, like with these all these different styles coming together, um, off jump man was uh the future. We just shot a video for that. It was uh is me and Prospect producing that together, you know. And then with with Solo on top of that, like he changed his style up with the flow. First, you know what I'm saying. First verse and stuff. I'm like oh, okay, all right. You know what I'm saying. It, it just came out to be an awesome song. Right. For my narrative, it's telling, you know, like a story of not giving up. You know what I'm saying? Because 
If I'm about 30 years old right now, man, I'm a triple OG. Started this thing at 20 in college, man, when I was at Arizona State and Colorado State. And it's just saying, look, keep going because you could be in this game 10 years deep and have a progressive point at 10 years. But you have to be patient. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is artistry. And just because some people make it look easy, such as like an ASAP Rocky or a Danny Brown, trust that those guys put x amount of years into this before they ever got in front of the camera so a lot of my story and the narrative is saying keep pushing keep grinding you know what i'm saying and good things can happen through those experiences and then also travel you know what i'm saying meet some people go uh to some different shows experience some things that are maybe like not within your comfort level and network. yeah network network network, network. 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 And, um, you know, good things can come of that and build to a perfect picture, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Although my picture is a lot different than anyone else's, my story and my narrative is my own unique style, I'm happy and comfortable with it at this point in my career where I feel it's a perfect picture. You know what I'm saying? So keep working, man. Good things can happen. Uh, I would say wild style. We talked about that a little bit before with the Godfather dramatic uh, guitars in the background. But that was very challenging for me because if you listen to the album, I sing on half of it and then I chop it up with a double time flow in between the singing. And it was a back forth like kind of baton process. And that was just like challenging for me vocally. You know what I'm saying? Because his, uh, again, chords and productions uh, challenged me. You know what I'm saying? So that was one of them that was difficult. Um, and then also I would probably go with uh, Jesus Peace. That also has a lot of double time to it as well. The, those, those untraditional rock style beats, you know what I'm saying? Just, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily easy to put the two worlds together. You know, a couple MCs that I have looked up to in the past have done that. One comes to mind, Zach De La Roca with Rage Against the Machine, man. And uh, I definitely gained an appreciation for what he was doing after working with a couple of these beats that Chris gave me, bro. So um, I'll go with Wild Style and Jesus Peace as some of the more difficult but rewarding and overall dope recording. Actually, we were not together during the majority of the recording process. Um, we traded a lot of ideas creatively over email where I would get the productions and the beats, write some of the stuff at my house, and then I would go into Inner Recess Studio and record with uh, Pro Prospect. And as some of y'all know, Prospect's done a lot of my albums in the past. He had done the music productions and the recordings. But this time around, I just wanted to use his expertise for the recording part of it and use Chris here as the beat maker. So it's kind of like a dual project. Although he made all the beats, Prospect had his ear on the production, making sure all the levels were adjusted right, making sure everything was properly turned up and sounded crisp and gold for the speakers. You know what I'm saying? So... We weren't actually in the studio for any track but one, which was Stargazing, and that's the joint that Lyrics to Lyricist recorded with me. And that did kind of have that Just Blaze feel to that beat, man. So that was cool to have him at least there in Inner Recess at the lab for one of those recordings. But really, man, I just went in with Prospect. That's the homie. Shout out to GP uh, NYC. You know what I'm saying? The Gorilla Publishing Company did a lot for me here in New Orleans. So Prospect's always a part of the team. Yeah, and it's, it's funny because uh, it just made sense for him to work with me as, as the beat maker and work with Prospect as the recording because it's pretty much Prospect, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I pretty much learned most of the stuff that I do know about beat making from him. You know what I'm saying? And my beats are kind of new school, kind of edgy. That's the stuff Prospect does in his spare time, you know what I'm saying? But people pick his, his boom bap stuff, so he, he experiments too. I'm just a little more bold with it, you know. Like, I, I try and, and reach out with mine. All right, so post perfect picture, man. Uh, hopefully, I would like to keep moving forward with these, uh, you know, getting more placements, getting me and more smarter with my placements and stuff. Like, uh, um, just recently, with this, I had a Jay Z situation. With such and such, I had a Styly situation. Styly's other homie, Vada, in Blue Collar Gang. You know, some Maybach music stuff with DJ Toomp out in Atlanta, you know, and just, just being more spark, getting uh, more experience, getting better at my sound, making a more distinctive sound, making, you know what I'm saying, so that when it does happen, like, you know, you know, you know a season beat when it's about to drop, you know what I'm saying? You already know, like, how Mike Will is blowing up right now. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I would, I would like to do that in my own style, but I want to be smart about it. Um, but until then, I keep, you know what I'm saying? Keep practicing, get my experience up with local cats like Solo, like Lyrics, like Pascal, like 3D Nati, who's not so local anymore. <laughs> Shout out to Nati. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is what it is. Anybody that's willing to work, man, I'm here. I'm Caesar. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram at C Z A O F C K P. Caesar of C K P. Um, website www.crescentkings K I N G Z with a Z dot com. Um, click on the link. Is my biography, uh, discography. There's beats for sale. Um, everything. You know what I'm saying? Like the front page. You got pictures. And stuff like in the studio or whatever like that. So just go check out the site, man. I'm, I'm always there. So again, the record's coming this fall. We're probably looking at an October first date, and you're gonna, of course, be able to get that at harnsello.com. You can also check it at dundealpr.com, who's pushing this project, Perfect Picture, for me. And it's gonna be available worldwide for digital distribution, iTunes, of course, Amazon, and then you can also stream it, man, at Spotify. So. It's going to be around, it's going to be on the internet, it's going to be all over the webs, you know what I'm saying? So just get out there, support the movement, support Reaching Higher PR, you know what I'm saying? Everything we're doing, Crescent Kings, and we're very thankful for all the push that you're giving us behind the project. Peace, fam. <laughs>